Yes, sir. What's going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? Welcome. Yeah. To the Big Time Show podcast that is being seen and heard live. What is that? Uh, good Lord. What is my Y'all forgive me, but that's one of these phones that's going off in here that uh, good mind. <laughs> uh, that's live TV. Okay. Oh, excuse me. Live streaming. How y'all doing? <laughs> uh, what's going on? I am being seen and heard live on the Podbean and being heard live also on um the Spotlight Sports Network, the two homes of uh, the Big Time Show podcast. I am being seen live uh, on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, uh, and Twitter. What's going on, everybody? I hope that you don't would help your boy out and share, if you don't mind, uh, on this Freestyle Saturday. Freestyle Saturday where we are going to just talk cowboy talk today. Um, Whatever you want to talk about, cowboy related, uh, we'll try to accommodate you. I got a few things in my mind uh, that I just want to throw out there. And the rest of the show, you guys will take over. And I will kind of let you guys kind of produce the show today. Because we are getting extremely close to what a lot of you guys are looking forward to. And that is the NFL draft where, uh, you know, as for us, it is a major part because we ain't signing no real free agents. So, you know, <laughs> y'all know that by now, right? I, th- I think that that. That is just about over with. The only free agents that we will be signing are the free agents after the draft. And usually those are camp bodies and, uh, you know, special team players. Uh, So the draft is very important to a lot of Cowboy fans. It's important, period. Uh, No question about it. Your team has to uh, keep moving, getting younger. Uh, hopefully in the draft you will find some uh, guys that, you know, can contribute to your team rather early uh, and become a factor uh, in our uh, uh, play this year. How about it? I've had a very productive day so far before we get started. The reason I'm not looking at y'all and the reason why I can't see no comments because I'm steadily sharing to all these groups that I'm in, uh, and hopefully we can get a you know a larger audience in the building. Uh, I'm almost through. Forgive me for not looking at you. But I've had a tremendous day so far. It started out with my son, who had his soccer game today. And this will be his fourth game, I believe. Uh, he had two goals and one assist. I was happy about the six because it was so sweet. You know, when you got a seven or eight year old kid, you know, all they concerned about is just kicking the ball. They don't know where they're kicking. They're not looking. They're just looking down and just trying to kick the ball anywhere. He's a little more advanced. Uh, and he he was down on maybe close to the corner. It's not quite a corner, corner kick, but he was there. And shocked everybody. He saw his teammates streaking uh, on going toward the center of the goal. And I kid you not, he looked and saw his teammate. There was almost kind of like a two-on-two. And he passed it, perfect pass. And it was a one-time. As soon as his teammate caught it, he yammed that thing on in there. And I was like, whoa, Uh, okay. I'm saying, okay, we got a little little magic here. All right, you know, a little magic. So I was extremely excited about that. And then, of course, he scored. So I was happy about that. All right, let's say hello to everybody. 
It's ties in the building. Hey, Miss Alicia, I see you. Cowboys, Jay, what's going on, brother? All right, what's going on on Podbean? Okay, Heather, okay, Mary, not a day going. Yeah, Trey, Trey got loose, Miss Ty. He got loose today. Uh, so far, I believe he has four goals on the season. I think he scored except in one game, and then everything else he has, uh, he scored in every game. That was his first assist, so that was – I was hype about that. I, I really was. I was hype about that. I was. So, what's going on, Cowboy J? You ready? Are you ready, Cowboy J? Because – you know, a lot of people are banking on this draft again, as we always do. Uh, well, don't worry about that. Uh, let me turn that down. What's going on? Coach Breed Love. Coach Breed Love in the house. I see you. Hey, Carmen. Carmen's in the house. I don't know if you're still here, but hey, Carmen. What's going on? Let me say this, and I guess this is where we'll start from. Um. First things first, how about this? By now, everybody's heard about the tragedy of Dwayne Haskins, uh, who died this morning in a car wreck uh, in Florida. Uh, if you don't know who excuse me, Dwayne Haskins is, he's the um, quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, if you remember, he was drafted by the Washington, whatever they are. Commanders, commanders, or commandos, whatever they are. Uh, a couple years ago, got traded to Pittsburgh. If you really know anything about football, he was um, drafted by, um, not drafted by, but he played uh, at Ohio State. Uh, mostly everybody knows, 25 years old, young man, tragically taken away from a car accident and uh, very sad. Uh, young man just got married, uh, just got married. Uh, a mother lost their son. Uh, he had siblings. Um, they lost their brother. Um, he was in Florida uh, preparing for the season with a lot of his teammates who played with the Steelers. Um, you know, just say it all the way around. Um, and, um, you know, I'm Heart goes out to that family. Mother lost their son today. Uh, so that's, unfortunately, uh, it, it's really nothing you can say. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's really a, a, a flat-out tragedy. Uh, it's, it's no other way to, to say. It's nothing you can say really about. Uh, my, I see my best friend and popped in, Eddie Woods, is here. Uh, appreciate you popping in, partner. Uh, but it, it's, 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 that's going to be a hard one. You know, you know, you can't, you know, as a, as a minister or a preacher as myself, I mean, <laughs> what, what can you say to them? I mean, it, it's, 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 it's so hard to, you know, sometimes you just need to just be quiet and just be there. You know what I'm saying? It's nothing you can say. Nobody don't want to hear no Bible scriptures. Come on now. The man just died this morning. So nobody don't want to hear no Bible scriptures. Nobody don't want to hear no, uh, you know, you know, concur, you know, really encouraging words. The, the wound is so fresh. Uh, you know, it really is a faith type of situation for you know if you if anyone on here's lost loved ones tragically or, or you really don't have to lose it tragically you could just lose somebody uh and you know when it just happens it's nothing really nobody has to say you really do have to go through that period of grieving and grief uh it's, it's human uh, it's, it's rare unless you know you know many people you know, if they know their sibling is you know, not sibling, but any person in their family is dying or they're older, you know, you, you know it. But it's nothing like the moment. You know what I'm saying? You can you can see it, but it's nothing like the moment. Uh, and that's when you know it's going down. Uh, 
but when you hear something like this, uh, it sends shockwaves uh, through through the family, and, you know, the NFL as a whole, uh, it, you know, people, Ohio State obviously will be affected, you know, uh, you know, but most importantly, my God, the man just got married. I mean, he just got married. Uh, so imagine the pain uh, that his newlywed wife uh, is is going through right now. I mean, unbelievable. Uh, so we're praying for uh, exactly, just exactly, Joe. It, it, it really is a tragic, horrible uh, death, no doubt about that. So we're praying for. Uh, the peace, uh, we're praying for the strength of the Haskin family, his wife. Um, I'm not aware of if, if he had children or not. I, I don't know that. Uh, I don't know. But however way you look at it, it is a very sad, 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 sad situation. No doubt about that. Uh, so... Hey, Newton Hyde, how you doing on Pie Bean? Thank you for popping in. Uh, so it's, it's a sad situation, uh, but uh, we do know God. If you believe in God, he He, he heals. Uh, that's one of his characteristics, uh, and I'm quite sure uh, uh, they will, will be depending on that characteristic. Uh, so uh, if, you, if you believe in the power of prayer, uh, why don't you guys send a prayer to uh, the Haskin family? Uh, everybody involved, uh, just give them, keep them in your prayers when you when you pray to God tonight. And um, hey, pray for their strength. That's it. All right. And I start to show off that way. I thought I would have been irresponsible if I didn't say something about that. It's 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 really sad. All right. All right, let's talk cowboy stuff real quick. This is the time where most of the cowboy fans get really excited uh, because a lot of cowboy fans are are armchair scouts. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Armchair scouts where they think they know more than the scouting department of their team. Cowboy fans really believe we know. Uh, we know who we would like on our team. We know who the stars are, who the leading candidates are for our pick at 24. Uh, the, the, the need, however, is, is if you ask Cowboy fans, they're going to be different. Some say we need offensive line. Some say we need a wide receiver. Some say we need uh, – uh, you know, some say we need linebacker. Uh, it's you know, it just varies depending on who you're asking, and everybody has. Them. Me personally, I think we need all of them, <laughs> but but you can only pick one at 24, and then so on in the next rounds and all that kind of stuff. So the major question is, what are we gonna do at 24? Uh, are we on the tip of best player available? Uh, that's what they did with when they got CD Lamb. Uh, if you listen to them, that's what they did when they got Michael Parsons last year. So it, it's obvious to me that the history shows that we would grab probably the best player available at 24, regardless of the position. So if that be the case, we could be getting another cornerback because they just very well may be high on the board if they're there. Uh, so I think we need to condition our minds toward uh, whatever you think we need to get. It might be a possibility that we won't be going to get that person uh, because they simply very well may not be rated that high on the board. Uh, not your board. <laughs> not, not your board. The Dallas Cowboy board. And please understand, the Dallas Cowboy board is quite different 
<laughs> than our boards. Okay. So let's go ahead and get our minds uh, geared for that uh, rather quickly on that. Now, however, I will say this to you guys today that I feel like this is the, this is maybe the only bright spot or maybe one of the biggest bright spots that we will have um, this off season. And the only reason why I'm saying that is because this is the time where we usually don't do too bad or we rarely just kill it because we have drafted well over the years. Uh, it's, it's, it's no question about that. Uh, we have drafted very well over the years. No question. Uh, and I'm going, I mean, I don't care what year you go to. Uh, we have drafted very, 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 very well. Hey, Pie, I see you done popped in. Hey, Pie, what's going on? Uh, we have drafted extremely well. And that goes, that credit, and this is what really what I'm starting off with, that credit uh, belongs primarily to Will McClay. Uh, the unknown, un, untalked about MVP of our team. There's no uh, question about that at all to me. Will McClay is dynamic. Will McClay is super, 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 uh, super, super great at his job. I think I gave all them superlatives uh, perfectly. You know what? I just thought about it. I just heard something. It's too dry to me. I, I'm used. I'm used to hearing some music. Y'all forgive me for that. I knew it was something I was missing. Let me. Let me. Let me. Let me get this going. Cause let me get this going. Yeah. I'm sorry. I knew it was something I was missing. It, it, it's, it's just a little too dry. Maybe. The, What's up, Chad? What's going on? I see. You. I, I maybe maybe it was the Dwayne when I had I had to talk about Haskin starting off. I had to maybe that it just put a cloud over the place. You know, it, it's a sad situation, man, for real. Um, but we're here, all right. Now, Will McClay, y'all. Will McClay is, is the MVP of this team. Won't hear his name. He don't do interviews. He, 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 I mean, he 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 probably could walk around Dallas and nobody bother him. That's how that's how that's how quiet and how reclusive. I mean, he can live a regular life like us. You didn't get a notification, uh, Terry. I don't know why. You you got that bell popped on. Okay, yours, Cowboy Scott Gill, man, Cameron Hayward, man, about the Hassan death. Oh, I'm not aware of that, Chad. Chad says that uh, Gill Brandt, I believe that's who he's talking about, made Cameron Hayward mad about the Haskins death. Well, it's, you know, it's so fresh, it's a touchy situation. Uh, so right now, you know, anybody could say anything wrong or at least what they perceive to be wrong and it's going to be a problem uh so i i'm not aware chad of what was said or what was uh you know anything i i don't know so uh thanks for the information though you're gonna make me go do some research and look up something real quick uh and see what's see what's going to be said there uh or what has been said uh so I'm sorry I can't speak to that, but I don't want to start putting anything out that I don't know about. So I'll uh, peep into that. But back to to Will McClay. McClay, listen, as I was saying, he can go eat dinner at Dallas and nobody going to bother him because not too many people really know him uh, at all. What's going on? Oh, yeah, yeah, Coach. I You may have to peep. You know, go back in my um, 
<laughs> Coach Price in the house. Coach, you may have to go to uh, my a page and just pull it back and, and, and look at it. I, I had plenty to say. Listen, I had plenty to say for me and you both. I promise you. <laughs> I was talking about the Lakers. Uh, it was, it was, uh, you know, and I, I, I didn't say this, but you know, I know I've been having some LeBron James. I know talking Cowboys, but I, since coach made me think about it, you know, what irritated me the most, man. Cause see, when you say Lakers, I, I'm thinking about the greats that we've had, and I kind of know what they would do because I've seen it. There's no way with the game and the season on the line, Kobe Bryant would have been on the sideline in street clothes. No way. Magic Johnson would have not have been in street clothes when you when you could if you just got seventy five percent. They were gonna play. LeBron looking like he about to audition for a movie somewhere. I mean, I'm just that's all I seen Kobe play with a separated shoulder and fingers hanging and leg messed up and all that kind of stuff. And you know, I, it just bothers me. And you, we know now that LeBron has been ruled out for the rest of the season, of course, because they ain't got nothing to play for. He happy with just was going, you know. You seen the little tweet today? He got thirty, averaging thirty a game, and I'm not knocking his play because he played outstanding this year, no doubt about that. But it just hurt me, man. Like the season on the line, doc. You got to play, man. You know what I mean, come on now. You could play because you're warming up. You got, you got to give me your. If all you got is seventy five percent, you got to give me your seventy five. You ain't hurting that bad. You just, oof. Anyway, all right, back to William McClay. <laughs> Back to Will McClay. Will McClay, this is where he shines. This is the time of the year where he and this amazing scouting department that we have shine. This is the, the time of the year where Cowboy fans can go ahead and smile a little bit because the, the draft, the scouting department, have done their job. They 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 know exactly what they're looking for. They already pretty much have a board by now uh, that is already set up. They have their eyes on a few certain players that is not going to take long that if they're there when the time for them to pick comes, it's not going to take long for them to turn their card in. Because they are that thorough in the scouting department. Will McClay is the one, he is the leader and has been. As a matter of fact, we want to go with his title. He's the vice president of player personnel. However, if you know anything about the Dallas Cowboys, it is a, there are a lot of people that will say that he is somewhat the general manager of the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, because Jerry Jones is not looking at no game film in comparison to Will McClay and that scouting department. Steven Jones is not looking at all that game film when it comes to picking players. They're not. They're not spending hundreds and hundreds of hours. They got too much other stuff to do. Now, they may play the role like they do. It's kind of like Jerry Jones has the title of, of being the general manager. Well, the truth of the matter is that there's a lot of people that are sharing in some of that responsibility that he has as the general manager. Jerry just takes all the, the credit and the hype. But the one that's behind the scenes, the one that's doing the real work, that belongs to Will McClay. There's no doubt about that. All you got to do is, and they're paying him. Uh, you know, nobody knows what he's actually getting paid, but they have held on to him. Will McClay has been sought after as a general manager for other teams, but he ain't always end up staying with the Dallas Cowboys because every time somebody comes after him, the Cowboys go ahead and put a little bit more money on him because they don't want him to leave because everyone knows that this guy 
is a uh, a, a pure asset to this organization. If you don't know about Will McClay, you probably need to Google him up and, and start looking at it, but I can just give you a few things. Number one, I did not know that he was born right here in my home city where I'm at right now. That's Memphis, Tennessee. I didn't know he was was right come from Memphis. I didn't know. I just found that out today. I didn't know he's from Memphis. Uh I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and reach for the stars. I'm gonna try to get his email address and and you know, see if he help a young guy like me out, at least in the in the podcast where you know, a young guy. You know, I'm I'm trying to use every advantage. Come on, let's go home, boy. <laughs> let's let's Give me about 10 minutes of your time and we shoot you the link and, and let's talk real quick. I would love to talk to Will McClay. I love the brother. He is outstanding uh, at his job. I would love to know, you know, I, I got a feeling I know, but when you look at the players that he has scouted and suggested to, to Jerry and Steven, my God, it's a list of pro bowlers and uh, all pros. I mean, he ain't just started this. It's been going on since, I believe, 2011. So, I mean, he he brought Romo to us. I mean, if you, I mean technically speaking, he, he suggested Romo. Even Romo was not even drafted. He was undrafted. It was, it was McClay pushing those buttons. I mean, you just keep on going down the list. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I see you, Coach. John Morant from uh, South Carolina, no doubt. Uh, yeah, we glad to have him here in Memphis, even though I'm a Laker fan, but I like the Grizzlies. Uh, that's another whole conversation within the cell uh, about how Memphis is feeling right now about about uh, the Grizzlies now, who are the second seed uh, in the Western Western Conference. So, um, I would love Will, man. Will Will has done an outstanding job. When you look at all these guys, man, look at look at all the all pros that he's responsible uh, of saying. Look, we need to draft this guy. This is what the scouting report says. I mean, good God, that whole offensive line. Will McClay got his hand on the line before that with uh, Travis Frederick and uh, you know all, when we were, had a dominant line Will McClay, Tyron Smith, all these guys the, Will McClay's handprint is on that everybody Dak Prescott, Zeke Elliott I mean it, I mean everybody now Will McClay has is, is, had his hand on there, Randy Gregory Lawrence Obviously, Parsons, Diggs. I mean, whoever you want to point out, Will McClay and that staff, the scouting department staff, has done an outstanding job. And because of that, you guys and myself can get excited about these guys that will be coming in because you know that the the scouting department has done their homework and based off the past, we can trust Will McClay. We can. Now, we can't trust Steven. We can't trust Jerry. You know, uh, you know, Will. Exactly, Coach. Exactly, Coach. I just brought that up by Romo, who's undrafted. I say, just say the same. This guy knows what he's doing. When you go back and Google him and you look at the jobs that he's had prior to the Cowboys, uh, just in case you don't know, Jerry Jones owns the Arena League, I believe it's the Dallas Desperados. Well, Will uh, was a a coach there uh, for for years, learned about the game from arena position and learned how to throw the ball, learned, and you know, in a tight spot like the Arena League is. Know how to to run, you know how to run a team. He was scouting for that group. He elevated himself, or at least Jerry elevated him to come to the Cowboys and pretty much do some of the same things. Now he's elevated to the point where he's vice president of player personnel, which is Stephen, of course, is the president of player personnel. But 
he's not doing the work that Will McClay is. He's just not. He's not doing all that game watching and scouting and all that kind of stuff. He's not putting the – he's not – I mean, Steven is not putting the board together. It's Will. It's Will and his guys in the scouting department. It's not Jerry Jones. He he is outstanding. And and you know that just by who's been drafted up for these last 10 to 11 years. All you got to look, it's a who's who. One thing about the Cowboys, we ain't winning playoff games. We ain't winning no Super Bowl. But what we are doing, we send a whole bunch of guys to the Pro Bowl. Though. We do that. Oh, we, we're excellent at that now. Oh, we, we'll, we'll fill out the whole NFC roster if you if you let us. We we send the old guys out. We do that. So, you know, if you if you just if you just go with Pro Bowl appearances for the last, let's say, 10 to 12 years, you will you will be you well, you won't be shocked. You'll be surprised who's at who pretty much is at the top or close to it. That's Dallas Cowboys. And Will McClay has done an outstanding job. And because of that, I expect the same thing. So, uh, you know, just in case you hear a name with the 24th pick that you not aware of, or you'll be saying, why did we pick a cornerback when we knew we needed an offensive lineman? Don't, don't, don't do that. Because the Cowboys have showed you that they, they will go best player available. And if the best player available is, is a cornerback, you can rest assured that's what's going to happen. It's, it's going to happen. So let, let's 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 kind of let Will do his job. Can I just go and put it like this? Uh, in Will, I trust. <laughs> About that. In Will McClay, I trust. I trust him. I trust him. Now, after that, then that's where my question marks, you know, belong. <laughs> when, you know, when Will do his job, now it fall into the hands of McCarthy and, and, and contracts and all that kind of stuff, contract signing. That's when I have to say, oh, Lord, here we go. Here come Steven. Here come, here come Jerry. Here come, here, here come Coach McCarthy. Here come Killing Moore. See, that's the Will McClay is not that problem. Did you also know about Will McClay that he's he's a hands-on guy? Did you know that Will McClay does not miss a practice and is on the, the field with the players? Actually, a I guess an impromptu coach, which he can do because he is a football coach. Do you know guys know that the players uh have, you know, I read about that that he He's on the field every practice. You know, barring inch sickness or something like that, this guy is not only in the front office, but he's on the field practicing with those guys, helping the guys, all that kind of stuff. I mean, this dude is is really a pure asset, as I said earlier, to this team. So this is his time. I believe we're going to be all right. I believe we're going to be all right with Will doing his job. I really do. Uh, and I, I implore all of you that if you do not know much about Will McClay, you need to just Google him and see what he actually does on this team. It, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's amazing once you look at it. Uh, so check that out. That's what I got to say about him. So I believe that this is our time where we can relax just a little bit. Uh, you know, we've been killed with this off season or lack of off season uh, or adding people. Uh, this is a time where we'll, we'll shine pretty good. I do believe that. Now, the other thing that happened this week, and you guys are running the show, so whatever you guys are putting in the comment box, you guys can go ahead and uh, write that down. It's a freestyle Saturday. Everybody's talking about, I need to calm some of y'all down because 
everybody's talking about this fool back that we signed from Chicago, and everybody going completely crazy with well, some Cowboy fans. Uh, they, and everybody said, what do we need a fool back for? You know. But y'all calm down. If you done your research on the young man, uh, there you go. There go Joe saying it. He, if you done your, your research on it, you'll find, you will see that the fullback that we have has played over sixty five percent of his career on special teams. That's what he's known for: special teams, not being the fullback. It's just another position that he can play, but what he is is an excellent special teams player. See, we so concentrated on what McCarthy and what Kellen Moore need to do and what Dan Quinn need to do. Nobody has said, okay, what does Bones want? Bones is our special teams coach, Coach Fossil. And I mean, like, he wants some guys too. No. And he, what he did is find out his reputation is is that he's one of the better uh, special team players in the league. That's what we signed. It's not per se about a fullback because if you know anything about the Cowboys, the Cowboys rarely, rarely use a fullback. We don't run a lot of eye formation and, uh, you know, we don't run a lot of split formation uh, from – we don't use the fullback. We don't feature the fullback a whole lot. We should, especially if we got an athletic one like we have with Semi, who coming off injury, who can catch the football and flat out run. Uh, yeah. So I, I kind of wish we, you know, I, I don't have a problem with the signing at all if it makes the team better and adding the guy this week at least in one area, makes your special teams, at least on paper, better. You know, we don't really give a lot of credit to special teams, as I said. But that, that special teams, as you should know by now, uh, can win you a football game. And the truth of the matter is, the Cowboys last year definitely had one of the better special team units in the game last year. Look at all the punts we blocked last year. That ain't happened in God knows how long. Uh, they were excellent in coverage. Uh, we didn't really give up nothing crazy on punt returns from other teams. I mean, we were solid. We were solid last year on special teams. So, so if you just add something to it, which they did uh, to me, you know, I think that makes us better. It makes us better. So let's kind of hold off, you know, on 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 the criticism, at least on this signing. I think that to be honest with you, uh, Joe, since you say what I think about him, uh, I believe it was a truthfully, I believe it was an excellent uh, signing. I do. I believe it's an excellent sign. It's not sexy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's not sexy. It's not going to get ESPN high, uh, uh, you know, ESPN front page news. And, and nobody ain't going to enter. You ain't going to see that on the ticker, you know, on ESPN. But moves like that uh, makes your team better. Uh, excellent and quick off coverage. He was excellent in punt, uh, punt coverage. Uh, you know, I believe it was Chicago. A lot of times he was a quarterback of the special teams, actually, uh, where you know the guys up and making the calls, making guys shift. Uh, you know, on the down line, uh, spreading guys, putting guys uh, in the proper position in front of them. Uh, you know, the guys is, is there. Uh, I believe he also on a, from a punt, uh, a kick formation. He also played the same position, and there were times uh, where he could be a threat from a fake punt uh, formation. Uh, he can run with the football. 
uh, you know, pretty much just he he's a good signing. Yeah, normal guy. I've already touched on uh, touched on Dwayne Haskins already. I don't want to drag drag the spirit back down like I did before. Coach Price. Coach says that there's still some vet linebackers out there in free agents. Can we get one, at least one, please? Coach, I, I, you know, you know, once you look at the Cowboys, Coach, the, the one thing I'm going to give, I don't like it now, but I'm going to give Stephen Jones credit in a backwards type way right here. At least he's consistent. Listen to what I'm saying. It's nothing. He he sticks with his system that he got on the refrigerator, on the wall, or wherever he's doing. He sticks to it. Free agency comes. He's not getting anybody. He's he's consistent in that. He waits to at least day four or day five of free agency and get some guys that you know that you're not gonna be happy about. He's consistent in that. Once he does that, you know, like this guy who they just signed the fullback, that happens, you know, again, that's the type of free agent that he'll he'll go get, okay, the kid that we just got from Chicago. You might get one or two of those, maybe, coach, maybe, coach, maybe, all right? And then there's this period where there's total silence because they're dedicated to the draft. They don't do nothing else. So actually, this signing with the kid from Chicago, guess what? That's that's actually goes against the, the you know the system uh, to me. But this is he's consistent. He's consistent. The free agents he will sign some free agents, coach, but it's going to be after the draft because they didn't see it's time to go ahead and get the account bodies and and you know and. All those guys, you know, like that. Uh, I believe that's when we'll go ahead and get some more free agents, but it won't be now. The the, the, the one, the, the vet linebackers that you and I, Coach, are thinking about and many others are thinking about, we, we're not going to get those guys. Like like you just said there, these guys here, Coach Price, and those on pod, being, you can't see it, but Coach Price calls out the names Anthony Barr, Anthony Hitchens and Hightower from the Patriots. Look, those guys won't be signed by us. At least not now. Now, if they're out there after the draft, which I think they will be because the draft is going to kind of clear up a whole lot of stuff for a lot of teams, and then they'll come after them. I don't know about us. Because, see, coach, 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 check it out. If they draft, and I got a feeling they're going to draft a linebacker this year. Maybe two. Maybe. I don't know what round, but I believe they're going to walk away just in the draft alone. Probably with two linebackers. If that's the case, you know how they are. They believe in draft and develop. You know that. So I can't even see, you know, come on now, unless the guys they drafted are horrible. Then, then you might these some of these names and some other names may come into play, but I, I just can't see it. Chad, what did you say? I'm sorry, I, I see you. Chad says my Steelers. I, I look first of all. Let's clear that clear this up. Chad, uh, you you are a Steeler fan, which means you despise the Cowboys just as much as the Cowboy fans despise the Pittsburgh Steelers. So I'm proud of you just hanging in here with me, you know, because uh, <laughs> cause we we don't get along, <laughs> you know. Steeler fans and Cowboy fans, it's just not, it's just not, you know, it's like oil and water. It just don't work. So I'm, I'm proud of you. But let me get to your comment. You said my Steelers should go after Baker Mayfield. Since the loss of Haskins, plus quarterback Jake Dobbins regrets after signing with the Browns after the Haskins news. Uh, I'm perfectly honest with you, Chad. Uh, I really could care less what y'all do. <laughs> uh, 
it does make sense though, however, what you said, but my mind is so focused on the loss and that his wife losing, you know, a wife losing a husband. They just got married. Uh, a mother losing their son. That's 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 all I'm thinking about when it comes to passes. I'm not thinking nothing about football or the results uh, or what the team should do after that. But uh, I'm just worried about it, you know, him and his, you know, his family. That's all I'm concerned about when it comes to that. But after reading your comment, though, it does make sense. I, I'll give you that. Somebody going to sign Baker Mayfield. Somebody is. It is. Okay. Coach. 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 Let me check Podbean now first before I get the coach comment there and I read that. Hey, D-Mac. D-Mac, I don't know if you're still here or not, but he came in and liked the show. Okay. Appreciate everybody's on there. All right. Coach says, big question. You think that if they sign any one of these guys, LV will play, want to play with, let me read that, dude. So I think if they sign any one of these guys, LVE, want to play, will, will play Will Steven like that. Coach, I'm, a, I'm assuming you're asking would, would LV play the Will position? I think that's what you're asking. Type in yes for me if that if I'm right. Type in yes. Uh, Terry says we need everything all on the table. Every every pick can help us. That's and Terry, you're absolutely right. That's why I say history shows that the Cowboys will draft best player available, especially at where we are at 24. I mean, you really are in a position where you just got to let the draft come to you. Uh, so, I and the Cowboys, they proved that with CD. Uh, we didn't need another receiver at the time when, when he was there, but he was the best player on the board. Uh, I believe that's the case. Coach Price said it was Steven, like LVE being on the bench. I don't think he's going to be on the bench, Coach. I believe they're going to play him number one until you get hurt again, which, you know, he's fragile. Whenever you have these neck issues, uh, you know, it don't look good. He's, he, he, I believe that's – they'll let him play. You got to throw in the fact, Coach, that we we uh, – one of the sins of the Cowboys is, is that we're loyal. Uh, we're just too loyal. We'll have guys playing behind him that are better, and you won't play him because you're too loyal to Jason Witten. The last few years of Jason Witten, as I've always said, kind of proves that um, they just believe in loyalty, and they're paying him. So we, we, you know, you know. Let's go to the Tony Pollard, Ezekiel Elliott situation. Everybody knows Pollard last year was better because of you know, because of Zeke's injury, but we all know how much he got the ball. He didn't get no ball. He was better, uh, but they continue to plug Zeke in with the little bit that he had in the tank. So they're law and you're paying them. So they're going to let LVE play until he just can't play no more. That's me. Uh, so I, that's the only way he going to the bench. Uh, Coach says so to protect his playing time. Sign, don't sign a vet. He only getting two, two million. Coach, I ain't gonna even knock you for what you're saying, but you you know how the Cowboys think. They think the total opposite of what makes sense. <laughs> well, you know what you're saying is what a lot of people say, but. They they actually believe that you no know, he gonna be all right. I mean, look how look how the, let, let's go to history, and and I can't really because my mind ain't thinking this way because you hitting me with this. But Sean Lee used to get hurt every year. They never drafted a guy, you know, really behind Sean. They could just take over. They 
they were loyal to Sean, even though he wasn't on the field. You didn't really draft a guy. You know what I'm saying? They could really threaten the position. You never, we never, with Sean Lee getting hurt every year. I mean, we had a true backup guy off the practice squad. We never went and got the help because even when he was hurt, they were loyal to Sean by saying, okay, we're going to wait on you to get right. As soon as you get ready, you're going to plug back in and get, get back on the field. In the meantime, you will be suffering. Because your linebacker core is not strength or or your linebacker depth, it doesn't have a lot of strength. So that playbook is out. We we ain't gotta go too far back. Yeah, I know exactly what you're trying to say, coach. But you know, they don't operate the way we think. They're not trying to. They have look, coach, they have full belief. That Cox that is coming off uh, ACL, which we really don't know really where he is as far as, you know, is the knee ready or whatever. They're really banking on him to be the man this year. Uh, They really are. You just, you, you signed Gifford back. That's special teams linebacker. I mean, you know. You know, you sign the LVE, got Parsons there. I mean, you already done put it out. You know, Curse played safety and linebacker, so you might as well count Curse in the mix too. You see what I'm saying? So they 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 ain't they ain't really trying to to really improve that. I really feel like that we're gonna walk away out of the draft with probably two linebackers. And and that's gonna be it. I don't think they're gonna sign a bit, uh, coach. I really don't. They they never do. Oh yeah, yeah. The time to get rid of and and what coach? This is really what coach is trying to say for those of you that are on pod and you can't say it on pod being what Coach Price was saying was that they're trying to protect the good old boy. Now, you got to read in between the lines on that, if you understand. Good old cowboy LVE, he says. So that's, so that's again, Coach, that's where that's where the sin, one of the unknown sins of the Dallas Cowboys exists. And that is they're too loyal to either the player or they're too loyal to the position. They're, you know, an example of being loyal to the position would be the Connor Williams experiment for all these years. Look how long it took before they finally said enough is enough. You were loyal to the pick that you made with Connor Williams because he was drafted in the second round. You you were loyal to like you are. We're going to make a dollar out of 15 cents on him. We don't care how sorry he is. We don't care if he's getting destroyed. He was drafted in the second round. We're going to squeeze all this, this talent out to make sure that we we get what we got. No, I mean, excuse me. We get the most value from the pick that we gave. And in the meantime, you'll leave guys behind him who you know are better. You'll let him stay on the bench and put out a, a liability like Connor Williams out there. So you're loyal to the position. You see what I'm saying? That this is the this is the the worst, and and it ain't just started. You were loyal to, I mean, loyalty. I've said this for years, coach. I've said this for years when I first started all this stuff. I've said this back when I was doing the cowboy report. Uh, you can go back to my page and just type in the year. You can type in 2016 when I was just doing the cowboy report. Uh, and what I was saying, Coach, was was that the Cowboys are too low. They're too low. Uh, they were too low to Jason Garrett. Should have been gone a long time ago. But you too low to him, so you let him coach all those years. And he didn't get you nowhere. He killed us. Oh, man. Coach Price, you, you going to deep water now. 
<laughs> Since you put it out there, you know, I ain't scared. Coach Price says they're loyal to color. That's the real. That that that, that, that may be a point. <laughs> that that look, it may be a point. Uh, look, that they were loyal to Jason Witten. It takes somebody like uh, Bennett, Martellus Bennett, to tell you about that one. You know, Witten was still Witten when Martellus Bennett was there, but let's not act like Martellus Bennett was, was not incredibly athletic uh, and could do a lot of damage. But he was saying that type of stuff back then. So they were loyal to Randy Gregory. See what that got him. See what I'm saying? You you could have had plenty of pass rushers, but you always held that spot for Randy Gregory just in case he comes off suspension or his suspension uh, gets reduced. Uh, you want to make sure that you leave the roster spot for him, and this dude never could stay on the field. But you were loyal to him. See what I'm saying? Loyal, loyalty. It, 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 it's... it's yeah, Gary, my brother Gary, in. Gary Bryant just said Martellus Bennett was a better player than Witten. Well, I don't know about that, Gary, but I know he he was more of a threat. Let's just put it that way. Uh, than Jason Witten, I I give him that. Witten Witten is is who he is. You know, he is a Hall of Fame tight end, no doubt about that. He is. Uh, great blocker uh you know but he wasn't the most athletic tight end and, you know and that, that we had some guys in their position and even you know the last couple of years where he was playing uh you know you know our job and stayed hurt too but job was was a threat um some would argue say that shoots was a threat uh, bigger threat than Jason Witten was. But, you know, it just all depends on how you look at it. That's the way I feel about it. But the loyalty part, they're loyal to whoever their starting quarterback is, Coach. How about this one? Check this one out. Was there really ever a threat for Tony Romo all the time he was there? Never. Never. Right, let's, let's fast forward. Is there really a threat for Dak Prescott? They ain't never going to sign nobody that's going to, to really threaten. And I guess some, you know, even some some would say that Dalton was a threat. Dalton was not a threat to Dak Prescott. He was not. They never draft somebody there that can really threaten a quarterback when they start blowing it up. You know what I'm saying? Tony Romo never had a guy. You know, Romo, a lot of people say Romo throwing all these interceptions. Romo throwing all these interceptions. I mean, who you going to turn to? He ain't have no threat. Dak Prescott would never have a threat as long as they're paying him that type of money. It'll never happen. Loyalty. And I'm not suggesting that Dak Prescott needs to sit down. And I wasn't really suggesting that Romo they need to sit, sit down too. I'm just saying they have a system from the starter to maybe the third string or on the third on depth. They they have this system. You can you can look at it. That they're not gonna play. They're law. They're just law. Uh Collins was not better than Terrence Steele last year. But because they paid Lyle Collins. You were even willing to put steel on the bench. See what I'm saying? So, you know, I believe in putting your best five out there. If Lyle Collins is not your best five, he need to be on the bench. He does. Uh, that's me. The Cowboys think differently. And and that's where I like I said before. Will does his job. McClay does his job. Excellent. He gets an A-plus from me. Drafting, scouting, the scouting department, Will McClay, A-plus. It's after that where the problem starts. That's why I say we can go and get excited 
about the draft because in Will McClay, we trust. Or at least I trust. I can't speak for you. We're going to be all right there. When we come to these next couple of weeks, we're not going to do no wrong. We're going we gonna to do well. It's after the draft where the Dallas Cowboy problems begin. As soon as the draft is over, as soon as they pick up the stage, the draft stage, and as soon as soon whoever the Mr. Irrelevant is, the last pick of the seventh round, right after that, when it's time or – Time to sign the rookies to the deals is right after that where the problem starts because some of these guys are going to be on the practice squad. They won't dress for the whole year, and some of those guys need to be dressing. Look how long it took Brandon or not. Y'all remember remember him? Look how long it took him to finally dress. Reggie Robinson never saw it, and I, I I wanted to keep Reggie Robinson myself, the cornerback. Never saw the field. Never. Brandon and I, first team All-American from Utah. I know he was small, but he caused havoc. A pure motor. Never got on the field. And you got pass rushers. You wanted pass rushers. And I understand. I'm not saying he's supposed to start it over D-Law. And I'm not saying he's supposed to start over Randy Gregory. But Brandon and I should have been on this team. Instead, he was on practice squad. Not dra- I mean, somebody put something about Israel in here. Let me go back to that. Let me find that comment. I don't know who that was. Terry Turner, I see your comment. I'm going to address that. Uh, somebody said something. I can't see it. If you're here, go ahead and put that there. There it is, Terry. It was you, Terry. Terry said he expect to see from some from Israel, Michael Moore this year. Wait till after the draft, Terry, for that. Cause see, I'm expecting the Cowboys also to draft, of course, edge rushers. I mean, I wouldn't be. I mean, and if that is the case, then Israel better be ready this year because he's going to be in a battle problem for whoever that last, you know, pass rusher they get to dress every game. I'm just saying, let's wait till after the draft. Let's see who they pick, and then we, you know, let's let's revisit that that one. Okay. Uh, Coach said, but they tagged Schultz and not Randy. Why? Because they don't think like we think, Coach. See, what's common sense to the football, what's common sense to football, Cowboy Nation at least. Uh, Yeah, I know he's say, oh, oh, I'm thinking about the, uh, the guy that was on Hard Knocks. You talking about Israel. Oh, uh, yeah, the big tall safety, you're right. I'm thinking about the other kid. Uh, I forgot his name. Good God. They made the team. His mother is from Africa and all that kind of stuff. That's the guy who I was thinking about. Israel, let, let, let me, let me, Terry, let me say this then. Let me go back to your statement, which is this. Thanks, Coach, for the correction there. Uh, where you going to play, Terry? Now that you now that now that I know he's safety, let, let me put this out here. Is he gonna make the team? Because the starting the starters are already there. Hooker, curse, plus the other guys that are already on the team. I mean. Donovan Wilson, that's that's your replacement for either for either position. So that's that's you know I, the battle really is going to be between Hooker and Donovan Wilson for the free safety position, and whoever comes out, whoever's the starter, the other one will be the third string. So you know, and if they draft the safety, you know what I'm saying? Let's not put that out. 
If they draft a safety, is Israel going to even make the team? See what I'm saying? So I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Hey, Gideon, I see you popped in on Pie Bean. I, I, I don't know. He said he should be in the rotation. Says they, they play four. I, I mean, is he good enough to be the fourth safety though? Like I said, let's 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 kind of hold off because who knows? They may draft a safety somewhere. They just might, and if they do, depending on the round, there's the battle right there for Israel. That's the battle. The three top safety spots are already set, if you ask me. The three are Curse, uh, Donovan Wilson, and and Hooker. I agree. Hooker says, Terry Turner, I agree. Hooker says that, that, that Hooker has LVE health. Hooker stays hurt, too. But he didn't get hurt last year. Not, not, but he didn't play a, you know, a whole gigantic you know, bunch of snaps, but he, he, at least he didn't have a season ending surgery this year. He walked away this year. He's good. You know, so it just depends. Now, a lot of people saying, what about honey badger? Now y'all can kill that. Y'all know the Cowboys not signing honey badgers. Just stop it. That's not going to happen. They'll draft one before they do that. So, you know, if they did something like that, uh, then Israel will have a real hard time making this team. Then if something like that happened. So I, I, I don't get it. I, I, I don't see it. But who knows? Maybe they, maybe they, maybe they won't draft the safety. And maybe they'll go into the season uh, with Israel. Obviously, being the fourth safety starting the year off on the depth chart because he's not higher than Donovan Wilson or Hooker, one of the two, whichever one you want to go with. Those are your top three. Uh, it's just that simple. So that that's what I got to say. Uh, somebody said something earlier, and I'm going to go back there. After that, I'm going to open the lines up, and we'll let you guys talk instead of typing. Uh, somebody said something about drafting a running back and it's Terry again. He said, I'd like to draft a, uh, love to get a fourth or fifth round running back. I think it's time that we, we go ahead and do it. Uh, yeah, because Zeke is getting nicked up, you know, easily these last couple of years. Uh, but yeah, we, we need that, but. You know, I'm, I'm sorry, y'all, and they, this may not have anything to do with that comment, but I'm just going to go on and say it, that if you got one, Kellen Moore don't know what to do with one. <laughs> Shoot. He don't know nothing. He don't know what to do with the running backs he got. <laughs> Shoot. No, why you going to kill a young kid's career like that? You 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 barely get the ball to the running backs you got. What we going to drive a fourth, fifth round running back for? He ain't going to get the ball. A fourth or fifth round running back is on the practice squad on this team. I mean, just tell, I'm just saying. I mean, I'm just telling the truth. If all the running backs are healthy, guess what's going to happen? Nothing. You're going to have Kelly Moore giving the ball to Ezekiel Elliott 10 times. You're going to have him give him the ball to Tony Pollard three times. And the third running back may get one. Maybe. I'm just saying. I, I agree with you, Terry. I'm not knocking what you're saying. I agree 100%. We probably do need to go ahead and start getting ready for another running back. Zeke still getting banged up. Uh, he's He's... Uh, whether it's because of injury or whether it's because he lost the step, whichever one it is, you know, he's not the same guy. Not saying he's sorry. He's not sorry. 
He's just not the guy that he was coming out of Ohio State. That's what the NFL will do to a running back, though. And his style of running, the way that he gets hit, and the way he delivers hits, you're supposed to slow up a step. The way he plays, you're supposed to. And he has. Uh, and so it may be time for that. But I wouldn't be surprised if we do that later on, Terry. You're right. You're right. All right? Uh, Coach said, wait a minute. People's injuries is not LVE problem. He just said he is just soft. I will push back slightly, Coach, on that because of his neck injury uh, and the surgery that he had. See, I'm a believer that when you start talking about the surgery that he had, it's it's a slow downhill walk from there. And depending on, uh, but because of the, and that's depending on the position. In his position, you don't need no neck injuries. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm just saying, you're already going to have a rough time anyway. Neck injuries and in NFL don't mix well together. But when you play a linebacker position and you got a, a history of neck problems, you, you, you're you not going to play a long time. Which is why I was shocked that they went in and re-signed him. You know, I, I still don't get that. I don't get it. I know he's experienced. I get that part. I get that, but I just don't know why we resigned him. Uh, you know, he had that one good year, his rookie year, where he did make, uh, he was an all pro. He was an all pro his rookie year. Y'all check that out. A lot of people don't forget that. LVE was an all pro, not pro bowler, all pro his rookie year. We ain't heard from him since. <laughs> he been done got hurt, so you know. And then he he looked like sometime when he played just out of position. Uh, I, I don't know what it is. Maybe still trying to figure the, the defensive system out. I I don't know. But coach said he's soft. Uh, he I I'll say this. He's not very impactful. Let's just say it, let let you know. Coach gonna call it like it is. He's soft. I'm just saying, when he on the field, I don't hear his name too much. When the last time y'all heard him do this, this wolf call stuff, I, I don't, I don't see it. And he be out there on the field. We been, we were begging for him last year to do something. He out there, didn't do anything until them last couple of weeks. I think he got, he started finding a little rhythm. He started finding a little rhythm, and he started making a few plays, but. He's not impactful at all. Not to me. All right. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm done talking. It's on you now. Phone line is open. It's right there on your screen. The ticker. If you're on Podbean, just push in that call in line. But if you're on Facebook everywhere else, go ahead and call in now. 901 654 6853. 901-654-6853. Call in lines open. We talking anything cowboy related. Anything cowboy related. Here we go. Here we go. Call from Coach Mob. Oh yeah. My guy's in the building. My coach is in the building. Coach Mob. What is going on, on Coach? Man, I'm in the house. I'm just 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 trying to get people prepared for the drive. For the draft, I'm I hear that man. I hear that man. Uh, one quick, one little, one little quick comment. If I get on these Cowboys, mm-hmm. LeBron James is in LA for the fame, not the game, man. I can't, I can't. I'm starting to, I'm starting to, you, you, to, to feel that he in there for the, he in there for the stars. Mm-hmm. And and if they win, they win. They don't, they don't. He just trying to build mm-hmm. his brand. Newton Hyde, I see you, man, on pop, and if you can hold on, I'll get with you. Come on, Coach. Yeah, so listen, the uh, little pushback with the LVE thing. Mm-hmm. Yes, it, you know, the neck injury is a bad thing, you know. And yes, if the neck injury has made him play a little tentative. He need to get out the field. Still making then, soft. He need to get out the field if you he tentative. He's still soft. I mean, at this particular point in time, he might not with soft. 
at the beginning of 2018. Mm-hmm. But now, he's soft. And the whole league knows it mm-hmm. because he had to take a $2 million contract from the Cowboys for one year. Yeah. Nobody else, if you couldn't get no more than $2 million from nobody else in the NFL as a starting linebacker, then that tells you your value with the other 31 teams. Yeah. It's, it's not hard. really. They see the same thing we see on film. Exactly. Exactly. So, I agree but, with it. But I think the, the draft is our thing. You, you, you're you correct with the Will McClay. Will McClay, is, he's done a great job. I think uh, where the scouting staff is more effective, and like you pointed out earlier, yes, you want to have your pick of guys in the rounds of picking. But when it gets to that free agent pick up those guys that fall in the crack that don't get drafted, that's where he does real well. Mm-hmm. Um I love Nick Ralston last year that they got off the at uh as a free agent um pickup last year. He played fullback and tight end and was a great special team guy. Matter of fact he played like the first couple of games of the season and had a, a lot of tackles on special teams and he was a bulldozer where he could play H back, you know, he was small for a tight end, but he was so strong and great at blocking and they let him go because, you know, they had a lot of players that they were trying to shuffle and they cut him and I think another team picked him up. But I think we should give the kudos to Will McClay because he is, he does a great job in what he does. But as I as I leave your big game, you can get all the great, the best cuts of steak you want. Steak when you in a steak restaurant. Mm-hmm. You can get all the best cuts in the refrigerator. Mm-hmm. But once they get to the to the kitchen, Horrible. a bad a bad chef can yeah, mess up a, a great cut of meat. Exactly, that's what I'm saying, Coach. The draft we do well, but <laughs> for some reason, right after that, that's where the problem start. I, I didn't see yeah, you too hey, long so after the free agent. After we get after, uh, after the draft, and after that day day when we sign all our free agent guys, and we know who we got coming in the camp. Uh, I hope these guys can put these guys in and get the best out of the, the back end of the roster because you really win Super Bowls because the back end of your roster performs at career career levels, not Hall of Fame level, yeah. but better than what people projected and better than what they ever played exactly. in the season before. So you get career guys, career years out of out of most of your, your roster, you got a chance to be in the in the play for a Super Bowl. I agree, Coach. I appreciate you, man. Stay All with right, me. Man, go ahead and take the other call, man. All right. Thank you so much, Coach. All right. Bye-bye. Love Coach Price. Always come in with the knowledge. And this probably won't be the last you hear from him because he, if I say something that he loves, he's going to call back in. Now. Ain't no doubt about that. I don't blame him. Uh, let me let in Newton Hyde on pod me. Uh, let me see. Are you there? Newton, are you there? I may be wrong. He may have hung up on me. Okay. Newton, if you're still listening, go ahead and call back in, man. Go ahead and call back in. I got you. Uh, pretty much on that. All right. Well, I'm waiting on him. If not, if you're still there, Newton, if you want to contribute with the comment, you can call right back in. If not, the show is still going. The call-in line is clear. 901-654-6853. You want to make a comment in? You can go ahead and call in now. If not, I'll go ahead and keep talking. Uh, Coach brought out that last scenario is uh, pretty much the problem with Cowboys that, you know, you can you can bring in every you can bring in Pro Bowl players if you want, but if you don't have the right chef in the kitchen, you're gonna you're gonna have some problems. And um, Kellen Moore it is not a good chef. <laughs> He's a you know what I'm saying. Now all you guys are here. Uh, you, you guys live in different parts of the country, so I don't know if we have. The same restaurants, uh, you know, but everyone I think either has a uh, what I, I just use what Coach said a good whatever your best steakhouse in your city is. Okay, right there, you already know the name of it. There it is. You know, Kellen Moore not in that kitchen. He's not. 
But see, every city has a McDonald's. <laughs> every city got a McDonald's now. So so that's what Kellen Moore is. He he he's a French fry chicken nugget chef. See, I said McDonald's, everybody. That's that's where he belongs. He, he's a chef, but he's a McDonald's chef. You can't come into the real steakhouse because you ain't you're not there. You 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 just don't you don't know what to do. Kellen Moore can have it's like the more weapons he have, the worse he get. <laughs> I'm serious. The more weapons that he has, the worse he gets. Can't get a ball to the guys. You know, can't don't know what to do with a true number one receiver in Amari Cooper. You don't know what to do. Uh, it, it, it's amazing. You don't really know what to do with an offensive line because your primary play calls are pass blocking, which means they got to back up. They're playing on their heels. Instead of letting them guys pulverize guys in front of them, in other words, cause a runner play where well, they can go ahead and just lay on some guys. You know what I'm saying? Lay on them, hit them. No, you calling, you allowing them to hit them. So you don't, you know, you just don't know what to do. You don't know what to do. Tell him don't know what to do. When it's time to run, he passes. When it's time to pass, he runs. It's, 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 it's backwards. Horrible chef. And this is our leader on offense. It's not Coach McCarthy. It's, it's, it's Kellen Moore. So I got a problem. But it's, it's, the problem is after the draft, everybody's saying, we need to go get that receiver from Ohio State, Chris Olave, I'm sorry, I'm Olave or whatever his name is. We need to go get what y'all what y'all want them for? What, what you want them for? It, it, you couldn't do nothing with Cooper. What 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 you hype? What you hype for? He ain't gonna know what to do with the Chris and and, and Lamb and Gallup. Down, I mean, come on. I'm serious. I, you know, we got you got to have the right cook. You got to have the right cook in the kitchen. Sean McVay got all those weapons in L.A. And he know what to do with them. That's why he got the trophy now. That's why he's a Super Bowl champion. Because he knows what to do with the, with the ingredients that he has. He knows what to do. Uh, Eric Bieniemy in Kansas City knows what to do with the ingredients that he has. Kelsey, at that time, Tyreek Hill, all the other guys that they had, the running backs that he had, he knows what to do. That's why they win a whole bunch of football games. That's why they have won a Super Bowl. That's why because he knows what to do. He does. Can't even argue with it. I, and, and let me throw another name out. Watch this. Now, we haven't seen the success like we think we have, like we think we should, but he knows what to do. And they're not nearly as talented as the Cowboys roster or the Rams roster. And that's the coach out there in Cleveland. Look at the weapons that he's had. Shub, uh, Kareem Hunt, Jarvis Landry. In Joku at the tight end position. Now, may, you know, Baker, Baker Mayfield may not be all that or whatever, but you can't blame it on the play calling. He knows the 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 weak, he knows the strength of his team. He knows that he got two quality running backs and he get a ball to him. See, they don't have the problem that we have. You look at the Ziga Elliott carries, he'll get 12 carries. Tony Pollard may get four carries. You look at the Cleveland Browns, Chubb getting the ball 20 plus times. Kareem Hunt may get it right at 15, 16 times. They're averaging almost 40 yards, I mean 40 carries a game. Give me a break. 
you gotta have the right chef in the kitchen. You do. You gotta know your strength. Green Bay Packers, I want Aaron Rodgers throwing the ball dang near 40 times a game. He's my best player. I know what I'm gonna get from him. If he get if he's throwing 40 times a game, I'm getting a 300 yard game. I'm getting at least minimum three touchdowns. Automatic. I want him throwing the ball. But then again, if you got somebody like Dak Prescott, you know that you don't need Dak throwing the ball 40 times a game. 35 to 40 times a game. You don't need that. That's not the game that that's, that's not right. Not saying he can't do it. You just don't want that to happen. You know you need more of a balanced offense. Instead, Kellen Moore, 40 times Dak throwing, Tony Pollard and Ezekiel combined, less than 20 carries a game between the both of them. It's not, that's, 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 that's not a good shift. It's not a good shift. It's not. It's not. Plus one eight zero three nine six zero three five eight four. All right, I got another. I believe this coach again. We make this the coach. Call from Coach Marv. Yeah, we we'll make this the coach Marv and big time, big time show up. The, well, the big time the coach show. Call, you call. Are, you're right. When I hear something you say, man, I, I want to piggyback. Come on, coach. I, I, I ain't got no the problem. Fans really understand this. And this got some push with our. You write about Kellen Moore, mm-hmm. but this has got some little push on my coffee too, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You you mentioned a, a person that I want you to mention. You mentioned Aaron Rodgers, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. When my coffee was at, at Green Bay, a lot of people said that he was past happy. Mm-hmm. And yes, Aaron Rodgers was throwing the ball 40, mm-hmm. 45 times. Getting out the pocket, scrambling around, making passes off one leg, only that he can do. Mm-hmm. But since they got the new coach to come in there, if you look at the passing attempts for Aaron Rodgers, they're nowhere close to being at the top of the league, but he is more efficient with the ones he throws because they, Green Bay, is committed to running the football. Yes, sir. You got an Aaron Jones back there. Guess what? He's supposed to run the ball. And they got the, the backup running back. The, the, the big kid. Uh, oh, what's his name? Right. The and, big dude. If yeah. you look at, right, uh, Dylan, right? Dylan. Uh huh. Dylan. Dylan. If you look at mm-hmm. Dylan, right. But if you look at the Green this is not saying, if you look at the Green Bay the last two years, they were, you know, best record in the league. Mm-hmm. But one thing happened in both of the playoff games. From the previous year against Tampa Bay, and then this game this past year, San Francisco. Mm-hmm. In the game in, in, in Tampa Bay, they lost Aaron Jones in the first half mm-hmm. with an injury. Mm-hmm. In the game in San Francisco, they lost Dylan in the first half with a separated shoulder. Mm-hmm. And then you put the emphasis for them to say, we don't have that two headed running game. We can't control the football, mm-hmm. and the offense kind of sputtered. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Again, if Keller Moore wants Dak Prescott to be the MVP of this league, yeah, you have to be committed to mm-hmm. running the football and putting him in favorable passing down, play action pass. And he will carve teams up. Mm -hmm. If we're committed to running the football all year long, Mm -hmm. you don't need as many receivers. Exactly. Exactly. But we I'm actually big show. Did anybody complain about Mari Cooper touches and 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 C D Lamb touches when we was we were on that six game winning streak? When we were seven and one? No. They were saying this. They were saying did anybody complain about that? Anybody complain about touches or or how many passes? I, it was it was a couple of games that they had two or three, four catches apiece. That was it. But the catches they they did have mm-hmm. were well, productive, impactful. Mm-hmm. were impactful. Mm-hmm. I want receivers to catch impactful catches. Yeah, 
I don't want receivers to be out ball control. He can dunk for five yards, two yards, three yards, bubble screens, slants, throwing bubble screens to receivers that may get in the round. Yeah. All those are good for their place. Yeah. But you you control a game with the running game yeah. and you score in the passing game. And, I, and then when I say that, people get that confused and they say, well, what you saying, coach, you saying uh, the passing is the thing. No, you score with the passing game. Yeah. That means you don't control the ball with the passing game. When you strike with the passing game, it's like boxing. Body blow, body blows, and when you go for the head shots with the passing game, it's for knockouts. Mm-hmm. No doubt about it. Don't pity Pat at the head. Let, let's let's go somewhere else, though, Coach, with that. Uh, what did Green Bay do? A lot of people were complaining about Aaron Rodgers not getting what he want as far as help as a receiver. They were complaining about that. And a matter of fact, a lot of people, Aaron Rodgers saying, why you draft him? But what Green Bay also did, they invested into their offensive line. Because they knew they were going to be running that ball, too. As a matter of fact, they sent, I think, two guys to the Pro Bowl this year off that offensive line. So, once again, it goes back to the front office part of if you're committing, as you say, to running the ball, you got to commit also and make sure that you have the proper offensive line that is going to be able to execute a, a commitment of running. Uh, like that, and, and, and they've done, and that's, and, th- and that's what they did. They did, that. but you know, one thing about offensive line play, mm-hmm. you make it very, very tough on a offensive line mm-hmm. when defenses, when a defensive coordinator mm-hmm. can almost know what you what what you're gonna do, either pass or run, mm-hmm. and when deep when offensive linemen get into a game and you make them finesse guys, Mm -hmm. they get attacked. Mm -hmm. You have to still give them a level of physicality to show their dominance on the line of scrimmage. Mm -hmm. And once they lose their dominance on the line of scrimmage, every pass rusher has the advantage because he's coming at, he's the dominant guy now. Mm -hmm. And that way, you're, you're starting to take the the strength or some of the weaknesses of your offensive line, you're exposing that and you're taking the strength of your offensive line and you're lessening that. That's why commitment to the run game mm-hmm. is very important. The Rams last year in the Super Bowl, they ran the ball 30 sometimes for like 25, 30, 35 yards. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. But people wonder why they can't run the ball and getting one yard, two yards. Mm-hmm. McVay knew that he had to get to a certain amount of carries in a close game exactly. to wear the defensive line down mm-hmm. because he could not in, he could not afford mm-hmm. Matthew Stafford to get direct pressure because he knew he would turn the ball over. Exactly. So he, he used him. the physicality, even though they didn't make run plays, yeah. he kept his line physical enough mm-hmm. to slow the pass rush. Yeah. And limit limit his dropbacks. That's the bottom line. You're limiting his dropbacks by still running. Got 40 passes. You still got it in, yeah. And a, lo- got, yeah. And, and a lot of that came, coach, on that last drive because they really had no choice but to pass because they were behind. Remember, so and they were the in. team, and, and the team was worn down. They the worn line down. was worn down exactly. because that physical play, exactly. even though they played strong against the run. Sometimes you're not running into a brick wall mm-hmm. when you get one or two yards. Exactly. Setting something up, you're giving your players a chance to be physical and beat on some people exactly. to slow them down. Exactly. You don't run away from the run. Exactly. If I was a defensive coordinator against the Cowboys, this is what I would say, big game. I'll tell you right quick. Mm-hmm. I would cut, tell my defense, mm-hmm. we're going to be strong on the run for the first quarter. Yeah. I want to sell out for the run on the first quarter. I know I may not can stop the run game all game, but for the first quarter, I want to sell out the run because they'll turn away from it because they ain't committed to it. Sure. Anything you're not committed to, you will fastly leave and go away from. Mm-hmm. Anything you committed to, you will always find a way for it to work. Yeah. yeah. That's the story of life. Yeah. 
is what you committed to. Whatever you committed to, you will never leave it or never get too far away from it. If you're not committed, the first bump in the road, mm-hmm. you'll find excuses to leave it alone. I agree. And that describes perfectly the way that Kellen Moore does the offense. If they get stopped two plays in a row, he completely gives up on it, period. It's, it's just that simple. Let me ask you this, Coach. Yeah, but you know something? Go ahead. He was, Lane Kiffin was the same way. Yeah, until he got around saving. Until he got with Nick Saving. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> until he got around saving. That changed everything. Let me ask you this, Coach. Saving was tough on him. Oh, God. Well, Saving was tough on him. He didn't have no choice. He didn't have no choice. With the running backs that Alabama had, he had no choice but to run it. Saving made sure. And that's the same kind of thought, the process, at least that I had with us. But let me ask you this, Coach. I, I'm convinced that Kellen Moore can't turn over a new leaf. You think he can? Because I, I just don't the see The only it. way he's going to turn over a new leaf is, and, and this is the, this is the problem with Cowboy fans, I, I hate to say this, and this is a, and, and I've been trying to get around this, and, but I know from the coaching aspect, to win a Super Bowl, you can't get around coaching. I don't care how many great players you got, you can't get around coaching. They still not going to pay up to their potential. Mm-hmm. Um, he has to have a coach, a head coach, that is not in that philosophy. Mm-hmm. And I just pointed out, that was Mike McCarthy's philosophy with Aaron Rodgers. Mm-hmm. So when, when Mike, people think that Mike McCarthy is just letting Kellen Moore do everything he wants, and he don't have no control over him, mm-hmm. I kind of push back a little bit mm-hmm. because I remember what Mike McCarthy was. Mm-hmm. Pass him. Yeah, so mm-hmm. if 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 that's what's going on, Kellen Moore needs a guy that can rein him in and be that ultimate play caller that can control a football game. Getting back to what I was saying about um, quarterback mm-hmm. drafted in the first round, Except right? One. Uh-huh. Send a voicemail. I'm listening, Coach. Go ahead. He, he about to have a, a quarterback draft in the first round. Uh huh. But he almost led the the SEC in rushing. Uh huh. Exactly. It just that says something about the growth of Lane Kiffin. Yeah. Exactly. He in turned Mississippi, around. In, in the University of Mississippi, he was a running team mm-hmm. that dominated on the run, mm-hmm. but he still got the play calling ability to get a quarterback drafted in the first round. Exactly. Exactly. Coach, I got somebody. So that's what I want Kellen Moore to be. Yeah. I got somebody that's on the line right now, Coach. Uh, you, but right. I, I, I know right. you're you listening. Thank you. Let me talk. Again, man. man, you can call in in a minute if you want to. Hold, but let me let me get this guy to, uh, in. All right, thank you, Coach. All right, they're going to get him in. All right, talk to you later. all right. I got somebody on the end from Savannah, Georgia. I don't know who y'all, but welcome to the Big Time Show. Who I'm talking to? Hello, Terry Turner. Who is it? Out oh, of Terry. What's up, Hello. man? Another beautiful day at the office. Man, what I you say? I just wanted to clarify with uh, Israel Mukwamu. Yeah. He played cornerback for three years. Uh-huh. And what got him drafted was he went on ahead and was able to swap the safety when they realized that he was graduating and the other guy, I keep forgetting his name, he went to the Carolina Panthers. Mm-hmm. He was the second cornerback behind Patrick Sertain the second. Oh, uh, Joe Horn. Joe, I mean, uh, Horn. Not nope. Horn. Horn. J.C. Horn. Yeah. Horn. Yeah, that J.C. That's the one we were. They, they, they figured out that they needed to start getting their people ready. They mm-hmm. swapped him to safety. He mm-hmm. was good at uh, strong safety, and they had a senior over there got hurt at free safety. They moved into free. Mm-hmm. So Will McClay saw this boy play well at all four positions against SEC talent. Mm-hmm. That's what got him drafted. Is this kid, if I'm not mistaken, Terry, if I'm not mistaken, is this kid, is this the kid that's six foot four 
play cornerback if I'm not am, am I right about that? Is he six foot four? Yeah, he a big he a, he a basketball player looking yeah. dude. Now he, he just he's tall but he's skinny like well, but, and, and shocked you because he's so physical. I'm not gonna push back on what you're saying at all, but I'm gonna add just a little bit to it. We all know through the history of Dan Quinn that he likes tall cornerbacks. So I'm gonna put that in with that also. Yeah. Go ahead. And that's why I say I expect to see something this year because Dan Quinn loves his wingspan. Yeah, he got the long arms. He is the only. The only all, expect, I'm sorry, man. I keep you interrupting. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was just saying I expect to see him. Everybody want to throw somebody else in the slot. I expect to see him in the slot because now they would have. Four safeties on the field. One who's the cornerback slash safety who can cover and come up and lay the wood to somebody. Well, I hate to say and this. Donovan Wilson lay the wood, but Wilson ain't got the body for it. I want let me let me go ahead and bust your bubble though, Terry. He ain't gonna play the slot. Now the reason why I'm saying that is because unless Anthony Brown gets traded. You got to keep in mind, we still have Jordan Lewis and Anthony Brown. Now, the projected starters next year, to be honest with you, a lot of lot of people believe it's going to be Diggs and Boss Man Fat on the other corner, which will move Anthony Brown and, and Jordan Lewis will be battling for that third spot. And then even on them dime, uh, dime formations, your top four four cornerbacks is gonna be uh boss man fat digs, Anthony Brown, and then Jordan Lewis. So from a cornerback position, it's gonna be real hard for him. You, I mean, just be honest with you, he already going fifth. He's already fifth. I mean, right off the top. So I don't I don't see him getting real a lot of unless injury happen, of course. If injuries happen, we're talking a whole different thing. Oh, I think he like Jordan Lewis. Not maybe not his height, but one thing about Jordan Lewis though, Jordan Lewis is a is a playmaker. And it's just kind of hard for him to not be in the mix at some point. I mean, uh I mean last year he was the third cornerback. I mean, yeah, I'm you know, barring injury. Like, like who now? Michigan, yeah. But Dan Quinn is big on height, arm length, measurable. Then the only thing that I'm going to say about that is, and and you're absolutely 100 percent correct. Now that is a Dan Quinn type cornerback. However, the only, if he's going to be battling at least in the cornerback position, he must have done something totally incredible to jump. Either Jay Lou or Anthony Brown. Now, there's a lot of people that believe that, and I don't know if this is factual or not. A lot of people believe that we can afford to trade Anthony Brown, and that remained to be seen. And maybe that's the way that he can get in. But if they if they are keeping Anthony Brown and Jordan Lewis, it's going to be real hard for, for him to get in playing cornerback. Now, the free safety position. Uh, or back up strong position. I believe he, he got a chance to, to get more playing time there than a cornerback. That's just me. But like I said before, the Cowboys, you know, uh, you know, Anthony Brown is a starter. And I'm not sure if Anthony Brown is going to be too happy being at least the third cornerback, minimal. I just don't. Anthony Brown deserves to start somewhere. He, he, he you know, he was solid last year. Uh, you know, with the truth be told, I know everybody like to talk about certain games and you know, but overall he had a solid, solid season as a cornerback last year. And he he played well. He, he played he played well. well and and, it, and he's a starter for a lot of teams. And I just got a feeling that uh, you know, I don't think him being or the idea of him being traded, I don't think that's so far fetched. I think that he can be uh he may be I, well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what they're thinking. So we, we'll just have to see. But I really believe that's that Bosman. They wanna, they wanna, 
They want to get rid of, I don't want to cut you off, they want to get rid of Anthony Brown, put boss man out there because when you play those super fast receivers, boss man can cover him too because boss man fast. Well, he needs to have to play the second wide receiver. Remember what I talked about earlier. Let's throw that in. You want to get, once again, you 100% correct. Let's also throw in the fact that loyalty thing that I was talking about earlier. You drafted him in the second round. You want to go ahead and start finding out what you got. So the only way you're going to find out is that you're going to put him out there. So I really believe that uh, that that's going to be, you know, the real thing. But and the Brown, let me say this. If it's a true fight, if it really is a true fight, Anthony Brown is going to have something to say about that second cornerback spot. I don't, I don't think we could just put ink pen on boss man as a second cornerback yet. I, I think they want him there. But I don't know if you could just 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 say that's just how it's going to be. And the Brown going to have something to say about that. Now, that's that's me. Well, my, my dad was a fight fan. He used to love them fights back in the 80s and 90s. Yes, sir. And one thing I can say that he taught me, look at that man track record. He done been fighting Jordan Lewis off for the longest. Uh-huh. Cool. So he... If he get put in something, I, I, I mean, he he gonna throw them things till he can't raise his arms no more. I like I, I, I like that, Coach Coach Mar Coach Price just said the grass always tell the story. In other words, when they get to training camp, we gonna find out who you know what we need to know. Uh, so that that's 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 gonna be interesting, man. I appreciate you calling in, Terry. Don't let this be the last time, bro. Thank All you right, so much. Now. Thank you, man. I'm go. Thank you so much. Hey, that was my guy Terry Taylor, supporter of the podcast. Uh, you too can become a supporter. You can see all this stuff that's going on. Uh, your, the ticker there. You want to become a supporter uh, uh, of that? If you want to donate to the podcast, it's not a requirement. But if you want to feel that way, if you want to bless the the, the podcast, uh, simple. There it is. Dollar sign. Uh, the big time show. There it is. Uh, also, you'll see on the ticker a uh, way that you can subscribe to it, which is the Big Time Show 3.supercast.tech. The Big Time Show 3.supercast.tech. Uh, you just have to make a decision on how much you want to contribute monthly. Don't have to be a lot. It could be $1, $2, $5, $10, $20, whatever one you want. If you want to support the show that way, you can do that. Um, there it is for you. Those are my handles. Um, Twitter at Big Time Lou, uh, Twitch Big Time underscore 73. Uh, I'm live there as well now. Um, uh, if you want to search it out on YouTube, uh, it's the Big Time Show channel or just Big Time Show, just type it in. You'll see my face there and all that kind of stuff and all the previous shows. Uh, you can subscribe to it, turn on that bell with. Well, you know, when I come on uh, live, uh, you can do that way. Um, simple. If you're looking for me, I want to hear my whole little catalog of shows. It's going on two years now. It's simple. You can go to Spotify. You can go to uh, Pandora. You can go to Google Podcasts. You can go to uh, Tumblr. You can go to all these different places. Uh, and I'm forgetting a lot of iHeartRadio. I'm there as well. Uh, all you have to do is subscribe to whatever you like to listen to and search out the Big Time Show, and you can uh, check me out there, especially for those that will be listening to the replay on this. Listen, um, Coach Coach says something when Coach says if we can't get what we want in the draft from tight end Anthony Brown might be that trade break. I agree 100% with that. Uh, Brown, I, I believe, see, see Brown – it's interesting uh, because if you are committed to boss man fat as your corner, you have a starter as your third or fourth cornerback. Now, the question really is, I just don't think Anthony Brown is going to be 100%. I mean, who would be, would be happy uh, being a third cornerback. I just don't see that. And let's be truthful. Anthony Brown can start for a lot of teams in this league. As a, as a number two cornerback. And so I think that that's a lot of value right there. 
Uh, it is. He's a he's a, he's a starter, and you can trade him and get something back. Another pick, maybe two picks. Who knows? But you can get something for him because he is. You can pencil him in, in, in as a day one starter for your team. Now he ain't a Pro Bowler, but he's solid. Uh, he had a very solid year last year. Uh, you know, it's just that simple. If it weren't for all the picks that Diggs got, I mean, pro football focus, I believe, had Brown, I think, graded uh, at least for majority of the season higher than Diggs. I mean, because of his play. So you really got to pay attention to that. Exactly. Coach says, or oh, Jay Lou could be trade big. It's either one. That's quality. That's Those are two quality cornerbacks. And I just can't see, especially one of them, if Boss Man Fat is our starter, one of those two guys, Anthony Brown or Jordan Lewis, one of them is going to be a fourth cornerback. And neither one of them don't believe that they are fourth cornerback now. You ain't going to even hardly get on the field with that. And so that's why I'm saying one of them can be traded. One of them can. I don't know which one. But they can be traded, and I think that's that's something that we may have to pay attention to as well. I I do believe that one somebody, I wouldn't be surprised if one of those two guys get get traded during the draft, before the draft, or yes, even after the draft. Because see, keep in mind, what if what if the best player available at twenty four is one of those cornerbacks from Cincinnati or whatever. Or uh, what if Stangley from LSU falls at 24? What if he, which I doubt, but what if he does? If he falls, I mean, come on now. Somebody got to go. I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm just, that's the truth. See, the draft is going to, the draft itself is going to kind of dictate some of this, this stuff I'm talking about too. I really believe that. If we draft a cornerback, Within the first four rounds, maybe it's gonna get real interesting in Dallas. At least with from cornerback position, I believe that. I do. I believe that. So that that that's. I appreciate you guys hanging with me, Coach Price. Uh, thank you, Coach. Said that could be a great draft day trade to move up and get a player you want. I believe it, Coach, because. You know, not too many people talking about this. I may be the first one, but Anthony Brown, at least, we know for sure he's a starter. You know, let's just throw out a team, for instance. Let's say the Jets. He's a star. He's starting with the Jets. I mean, Jaguars. He's he's gonna start with the Jaguars. You see what I'm saying? So, I mean, a day one starter. You can get something for him. Fifth rounder, what, whatever, another six. I don't think you're gonna get too much higher than that. Maybe, maybe a fourth, maybe, maybe. But you can get everything else down. I mean, that's that's another pick. You you can get or you can get somebody for Andy Brown. Now, y'all done talked about him bad, but let's look. He has value. He does. J. Lou has value, but I don't think he has as much value. As, as Anthony Brown may have. Anthony Brown can command a draft pick for you. You can you can trade, you can trade, matter of fact, you can package, as Coach just said, you can package, if you know you got somebody in mind, you can package that 24th pick and throw Anthony Brown in with that trade package. And I guarantee you, you're going to move up. I'm telling y'all. But that what Coach said, package him up with a fifth and move back up to the second. You can, I mean, yeah. That if somebody will bite that immediately. You get a starting cornerback, veteran, knows the game, can make from some plays for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm serious. You we I ain't too many people talking about that, but I'm 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 putting that out there now. You're not gonna get that with Jay Lou. You may get something, but it won't be as powerful like Anthony Brown. Anthony Brown is a starter in this league. No doubt about that. I guess on that note, I might have to pick that one back up, Coach. 
I don't know if you done heard about that one somewhere else. I don't think boss done got a hold of that one yet. <laughs> I don't think boss done, done, done broke it down. Like, I mean, it, it, but I, I, I believe that that's something that, uh, I, I wouldn't doubt that the thought process has, has hurt, has started in Dallas about that because there's just nowhere in the world. One of these two guys, Jordan Lewis or Andy Brown would be happy being the fourth cornerback. There's no way. No way. No way. No way. Especially if it's Anthony Brown. Andy Brown can't go from a number your number two cornerback to your fourth cornerback. It's just no way. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't be happy with that. So I, I believe that that's that's another interesting thing. I, that's 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 interesting. I believe we done hit on something there too. Matter of fact, now I believe that is a a, a possibility for real. One of those two guys, I, I believe that. All right, I'm out of here, y'all. Thank y'all for hanging with me. Who know? Uh, Monday, I will be with you guys on Monday. We might pick back up with this, uh, this little thought process. Uh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's, let's, I, I, I think it would be, uh, if you just really hung up on the draft, that, that would get you another pick. No doubt about that. I believe that. All right. We'll talk about this Monday and some, and some more stuff, uh, cowboy related. Uh, and we'll talk about that. We're getting closer to the draft. You guys know, uh, how much we love the draft. Well, at least most cowboy fans do. I ain't just, too crazy about it, but I know it's, it's very needed, and I know that we got a chance to retool uh, and rebuild a little bit, and we have an excellent captain in Will McClay that can get the job done for us. All right? I'll see you guys Monday for the one and only. Appreciate you guys hanging with me. Appreciate you, Joe, from Italy, the country of Italy. Thank you for popping in and always hanging with me, brother. Thank you so much. We'll see y'all next time, Monday. This is the Big Time Show. listening Monday 7 p.m. Come on, hang back with your boy. This is the Big Time Show.